Hey, welcome back. This is 4.6 on curve sketching. Okay, this one, uh, the problems tend to be a little bit long, uh, but you'll be able to graph anything in the universe without a calculator. Okay? So it's a very powerful uh, technique if you master it. And the way we're going to do it is to first get the domain Secondly, see if there's any symmetry involved. Um, then we will get the, uh, the x and y intercepts. Then we will talk about the asymptotes, so vertical, the horizontal, or even slant asymptotes, if, they are, if there are any. Um, then we will go to the first derivative and get all the critical numbers. Uh, then the second derivative, all the critical number, all the potential inflection points. Sorry. And then we will do our sign charts. Sign charts. And in particular, I would prefer three sign charts. One for the function, one for the derivatives. Uh, one for the first derivative, one for the second derivative, so three. And then finally, we will graph. Um, you may want to uh, include uh, some extra points, extra point plotting there. If you are that type of person who needs everything to be perfect. Okay, and that's the spiel. Um, so that kind of eight-step process. So let's dive, dive right in. And uh, so this is just an example. It used to be number three in the book before they decided to change it so they could sell more books. No offense. Um, y equals x squared all over x squared plus three. Okie dokie. So I'm going to go through this whole spiel with this stuff. So the domain here for, well, it's a rational function. The only place rational functions have issues is when the denominator equals zero. Okay. Uh, here, the denominator will never equal zero because x squared is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this will never happen. And so the domain is negative infinity to infinity. Symmetry. Uh, you can usually analyze the numerator and denominator uh, as polynomials themselves and kind of get the symmetry. So in the numerator, it looks like it's even. And the denominator, it's also even. You can tell by the exponents. So you can think, think of, you know, if they all have even powers, um, downstairs, x squared plus 3, x to the 0, 0 is an even number, is even. Okay, so if all of the exponents are even, that means uh, that particular polynomial is even. If all of its exponents are odd, that means it, that particular polynomial is odd. If it has a mix of even and odds, it's neither. And uh, the, the spiel is if you have an even over an even, it's even. So it works like positive and negatives. If you have an odd over an odd, it's even. If you have an even over an odd, it's odd. If you have an odd over an even, it's uh, odd. Um, if you have a neither anywhere, you are out of luck. So uh, neither over even is neither. Even over ne neither is neither. Uh, neither over neither is neither. Odd over neither is neither. And neither over odd is neither. Okay. So anyways, here this guy is even. So that helps uh, us graph it because we can tell um, um, if you get one half of it, you got the other. So even symmetry also means uh, y-axis symmetry. Okay. Okay, um, what else do we need? So three, we need some x and y intercepts. And so for the x intercept, you let y equal zero. So we'll have zero equals x squared all over x squared plus three. Uh, basically, you just set the numerator equal to zero, right? Because if you multiply both sides by x squared plus three, you get x squared equals zero. That's just the numerator equaling zero. And then square root on both sides, x is 0, so the x-intercept is 0. The y-intercept, you let x equal 0, so y equals 0 squared 
over 0 plus 3, which is 0 over 3, which is 0. Okay, so the x and y intercept are the same, just 0, 0. Uh, and let's take a look at other junk. Oh, yes, the first derivative, f prime of x. So we have to go low d high minus high d low. So low times the derivative of the high minus high times the derivative of the low all over the low squared. Okay, and this is where simplifying your derivatives really helps because we'll have to go to the second derivative, right? Uh, so anyways, this one is 2x cubed plus 6x minus 2x cubed all over x squared plus 3 squared. And then, okay, those go away. You just get 6x over x squared plus 3 squared. Okay, so that's the first derivative. We also want the critical numbers there, so that's where f prime of x does not exist. And that'll happen when the denominator is equal to zero, but we've already seen that that never happens, so there's no help there. That also happens where f prime of x is zero, so that's where 6x is zero. In other words, x is zero is our only critical number. I'll just write cm. Okay, next, uh, second derivative of double prime of x. Again, low d high minus high d low. So lu d high minus high d low. So two, you have to do a power rule. That'll be the first power, then the chain rule. Two x out there. All over the denominator squared. Okay. Uh, you don't want to uh, um, what, foil that thing out. You want to factor out an x squared plus 3 because that will divide out with the denominator. Um, you'll be left with x squared plus 3 times 6 uh, minus, so that other x squared plus 3 is gone. You'll be left with 2x times 2 times 6x, which is 24x squared. Uh, whoops, wrong type of parentheses, all over the x squared plus 3 to the fourth. And then we can uh, remove one of the x squared plus 3s, and you'll get 6x squared plus 18 minus 24x squared all over x squared plus 3 cubed. And that'll lead us to negative, uh, I think, 18x squared plus 18 all over x squared plus 3 cubed. Okay, uh, so I need to find the potential inflection points, the pips. So negative 18 x squared plus 18. You just set that equal to zero. The denominator will never equal zero, so the, the second derivative is never undefined. We just have to find where the zeros are. So uh, solve this equation. 18 x squared is 18 x squared is 1, so the pips uh, plus or minus 1 potential inflection points. Okay, okay. Um, what next? The um, uh, asymptotes, so did I do the, I, I skipped the asymptotes, that's what I did. Okay, sorry about that. So let's get the asymptotes in here, I'll just slap it on at number 6. Um, Corey and Verdi. There won't be any slant asymptotes here because the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same. So the slant asymptotes only happen when, um, so these guys only happen when the degree of the numerator exceeds the degree of the denominator. Okay. Okay. Um, Right, so let's get the horizontal vertical. For the horizontal, you're thinking in terms of limits, right? So we're taking the limit as x goes to positive infinity of x squared all over x squared plus 3. Okay. And if we use the techniques from the last class, all we have to do, because uh, there's this kind of shortcut method we learned, all we have to do is take the ratio of x squared over x squared which is 1, and the limit of a constant is a constant. So that'll just not be 1. And in the other direction, it's the same. Okay. So that'll just end up being uh, 1 as well. 
So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Uh, there's no vertical asymptote because the denominator never equals 0. So if you take the denominator and set it equal to 0, which we've already done twice, I'm not going to do it again. Well, yeah, I did it once uh, right here and then once right here. Um, kind of, right? I guess I didn't do it this over here as well associated with the, the derivative, but uh, you get the point. Okay, the denominator is not zero, so there's no vertical asymptote. Okay, uh, so lastly, we have to put all of this information together, and the way I want you to do it is like as follows. I want you to do three number lines. Okay, so I have a number line here, a line here, and I'm running out of room, so I'll just uh, I'm have to shift my entire picture up a little bit. Uh, the first one is for f of x, the second one is f prime of x, and the third one is f double prime of x. So on f of x, you're going to label um, vertical asymptotes, which we don't have any, okay? but just in general. Okay, so in general, we label... Um, on, the, on the first number line, the vertical asymptotes and the x-intercepts. Okay, so we did have one x-intercept at zero. And I want to I draw the actual graph above all of these number lines, because okay? they're going to dictate uh, what the graph looks like. Okay, um, so on the second number line, I'm labeling critical numbers. Um, so, and, and, and technically any place where, where the uh, function um, has an issue. So uh, technically in the definition of a critical number, for it to be a critical number, f of x had to be defined at that critical number. But uh, we're also going to include any place where, the, where the, the thing is not defined. So, um, you know, it's it's kind of a, a technical issue. I just have to make a statement about it. Usually it won't affect us. Okay, so anyways, the critical numbers are what we're putting there. And then thirdly, we're putting the potential inflection uh, points. Okay, So I'll, I'll say critical numbers, but also uh, basically um, anywhere where uh, the derivative is undefined, but also where the function might be undefined as well. So we don't want to exclude pretty much anything. Uh, okay, so anyways, the critical numbers, um, I think there was one at zero. And then the potential inflection points, there was one at uh, negative one and then another one at one. Okay, okay so we need to go through and, and do test value signs and conclusions for each one of these. and uh, go through the whole spiel. So here, um, I may need to kind of record what each of these guys were. Um, f of x was uh, x squared all over x squared plus 3. f prime of x was 6x all over x squared plus 3 squared. And then uh, f double prime of x was, um, I'm going to factor it a little bit to make it easier to deal with, 18 times 1 minus x squared all over um, x squared plus 3 cubed. Okay. So everything is set up. I'm ready to go. Um, now I'm going to start doing test values and stuff like that. You may want to... Uh, Go ahead and label your your asymptotes as well, or if you have any points to plot, plot them. Uh, anyways, let's take a look. Um, so what do we have here? I need to find some test values. So I'll try x is negative 1. You know, I'm plugging that into f of x. So to the side there, negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared plus 3 is um, 
positive. So positive over positive is positive. And what I'm looking for here is whether the function is above or below the x-axis. So positive will mean it's above the x-axis. Try x is positive 1. Again, it's going to be plus, so it's going to be above. So what's happening with the graph here is that it's, it's ricocheting off 0. Okay. Um, okay, let's try x is negative 1. So the denominator for the derivative is squared. So all I have to do for the sign is look at the numerator. So 6 times negative 1 is negative. That means it's decreasing. Try x is positive 1. 6 times positive 1 is positive, so it's increasing. And then finally, I'll do my, uh, my uh, potential inflection point work. Um, so test value in this interval. Let's try negative 2. Um, the denominator, because it's x squared plus 3, will always be positive. That will always be greater than 0, so I need not worry about the denominator. Um, the only deciding factor is really this thing here. That's the only thing that could potentially be negative and make everything negative. So all I need to do is look at that. Um, so negative 2, 1 minus negative 2 squared is 1 minus 4. That will end up being negative, so that's a sad face. Um, try x is 0. 1 minus 0 will be positive, so that's a happy face. And then finally, try x is 2. 1 minus 4 is negative, so that's a sad face. Okay, okay. Um, now I'm going to add in any extra details I, I want. Um, I know there's a... Okay, so I'm going to need th these guys for inflection points, negative 1 and 1. Um, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And then the only point I'm going to worry about is just at uh, uh, 0, 0. That was the x and y intercept. So uh, it's approaching that horizontal asymptote as I go towards negative infinity. So it'll be up here somewhere. But it's, uh, it's above the x-axis. Of course, it already is. And, and it's decreasing, and it's concave down. Okay, So it's concave down, concave down. And then when it hits the... Uh, the uh, Inflection point, it's going concave up. Okay, so it's going to do kind of an S shape. It should be smooth. Mine's not very smooth. Okay, should be doing kind of an S shape. And then it'll go uh, start increasing and it's concave up until it gets to one. And then it curves over to concave down. And then it'll approach y equals one as x goes to infinity. Okay. So it's a pretty awesome thing that you can unpack um, the sky now using all its derivatives and all that stuff in order to get a nice little picture of, uh, of what we're dealing with. Okay, Okay. so let's look at another one. Um, this time we have a slant asymptote in this new problem. It's another rational function. Um, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 12. And that's all over x minus 4. Okay. So first off, the domain. Again, the domain, there's no issues unless you have for rational functions unless there's division by 0. So you set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. x equals 4 is a troublemaker. There will be a vertical asymptote there as well. So the domain will go from negative infinity to 4, union with 4 to infinity. Okay, secondly, even an oddness, uh, if you look at the degree of our numerator there, it goes even, so 2 is even, and then it goes odd. So you have even, odd degree, then even, again, 0 is even. Automatically, that's a neither case. Okay, it's neither even or odd. Okay, so the, the denominator, of course, is also um, the first degree is odd, then 4, that degree is considered even. Um, so it's a neither over neither. If you see a neither at all, it's neither. It's neither even or odd. Okay, so no symmetry to help us in our journey. Um, thirdly, then, x, y intercepts. Okay, so x, y ints. Um, firstly, the x intercept, that's where y is equal to 0. So it's just taking the numerator and setting it equal to 0, basically. x minus, minus, oh, geez, x minus 6x plus 12. 
Um, try to solve that. It doesn't look like it's going to factor. So you have the quadratic x equals 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 4 times a times c. That's negative. This thing is negative. The discriminant is negative. Uh, so there is no help there. So none, no x-intercepts. That happens. Um, Y-intercept then is where x is equal to 0. So you'll have uh, y equaling 12 all over negative 4 eventually. So that's negative 3. So it's a y-intercept there. Um, asymptotes. Okay, so let's do that this time. Uh, there's no horizontal asymptote, but there will be a slant asymptote. Okay. And you can tell, again, by the degree of the polynomials in the numerator and denominator. The degree of the numerator exceeds the degree of the denominator. Therefore, there is a slant asymptote. Uh, anyways, for the vert asymptote, the vertical, um, all you have to do is set the denominator equal to zero. So I already kind of spilled the beans on this one. There's one at x is four. For slant asymptotes, you have to do long division. So you'll have uh, x squared minus 6x plus 12 divided by x minus 4. So what times x is x squared? So that would be x squared minus 4x, and then you subtract. Okay. x squared minus x squared is 0. So negative 6x plus 4x is 2x. Bring down the 12. Okay, so plus 2. Then you get 2x minus 8. Um, subtract those. 2x is 2x is 0. 12 plus 8 is 20. Um, the only thing that matters, though, is this thing up here. That is the slant asymptote. So we don't worry about the remainder. You kind of pretend the remainder just goes to zero over time. Okay. So our slant asymptote finally then is y equals x plus 2. Okay. okay. Um, is that all we need? Oh, we need derivatives. Okay. So we go for some derivatives. Uh, what number am I on? Four, step five. Um, low di high minus high di low. So lu times the derivative of the high, which is 2x minus 6 minus high, x squared minus 6x plus 12, times the derivative of the low, all over the low squared. Okay. Um, we want to foil the heck out of the top and simplify. So what are we getting? 2x squared minus 8x minus 6x is minus 14x plus 24. Distribute this negative. Minus x squared plus 6x minus 12 all over x minus 4 squared. And let's see. 2x squared minus 1x squared is x squared. Negative 14 plus 6 is minus 8x. 24 minus 12 is plus 12 over x minus 4 squared. And uh, I think that's as good as we're going to do. We want the critical numbers. So again, where is f prime of x not existent? And that'll happen at 4. And this is, I was talking about this earlier with uh, technically um, this thing right here wouldn't be a critical number x equals 4 because the original function is not defined there. Okay. Um, for it to be a critical number, by definition, it has to be defined in the original function. But for our analysis, we're going to treat it like it's a critical number. Okay. Okay. So anyways, uh, f prime of x equals 0. So I just take the numerator and set it equal to 0. So I think this is x minus 6, x minus 2. 0, so x is 6, and x is 2. So we're going to use all of these in our analysis okay, uh, of the derivative. So step 6, then, I need f double prime of x. So lu, x minus 4 squared. So derivative of the high is 2x minus 8, minus high, x squared minus 8x plus 12, times the derivative of the low. Uh, so I do a power rule. Four to the first power, um, all over x minus 4 now to the fourth. You can factor out x minus 4 from the numerator. 
and you get x minus 4 times 2x minus 8 uh, minus 2 times x squared minus 8x plus 12 all over x minus 4 to the fourth. And then um, we can cancel out one of the x minus 4s. I got a foil, this baloney. So 2x squared minus 8x minus 8x is minus 16x plus uh, 32 minus 2x squared plus 18x minus 24 all over x minus 4 cubed. So these problems are long. I'm not going to lie to you. I still remember doing them when I was, jeez. It's kind of scary to think how long ago, 30 years ago. I still remember doing them, <laughs> but I was in your shoes. 30 years ago, I still remember it. That's how painful it is. Um, minus 6, 7, 8, minus 8, no, it's plus 8 all over x minus 4 cubed. Is that right? Seems like I made a mistake. Uh, 2 times 8 is 16. So. I did make a little mistake. Sorry about that, folks. It's just eight. Okay, so it has a happy ending, but you know, it's kind of a long movie. Um, all right, so again, we go to. Uh, oh, we still have to do. Did I do the asymptotes yet? Oh, geez, why do I keep doing that? Oh no, no, I'm good. So we got the slant asymptotes. Uh, all right, so now I want to go to my number lines and my picture. Um, so I need three number lines. Okay, I'm putting my, my graph directly above this junk. And it seems like I really have to need, I need a lot of room to pull this one off, but we'll see. Um, let's see, f of x was x squared minus 6x plus 12 all over x minus 4. f prime of x was x squared minus 8x um, plus 12 all over x minus 4 squared. And then f double prime of x was 8 over x minus 4 cubed. Um, get your, uh, get your, your, your points of interest here. Let's get some tick marks on the, there's like a vertical asymptote at 4. There was a y-intercept at negative 3. There is a slant asymptote. Um, slant asymptote is y equals uh, x minus 2. Okay, so its slope is 1. Its y-int is negative 2. Okay, so it's, let me draw that asymptote in a different color. Oh, so it's going to start here, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1 through there and uh, the graph will conform to this asymptote over time okay. uh, what else uh, I need my uh, so on the first number line you're labeling asymptotes and any x intercepts there were no x intercepts so I just have four. Um, on the derivative, we had three kind of points of analysis. So one at two, one at four, and then one at six. And then on uh, our um, second derivative, there's just one pip. Um, I guess I didn't get the pip. So for this thing, you know, where does a second derivative not exist? 
that's where the denominator equals zero. And of course, that's when x is four. And then where's this thing equal to zero? Uh, that never happens, right? Um, you could try to solve this equation, but you're not going to get any solutions. Nope. Okay, so let's go back to our graph um, and start doing our, our, our analysis with our test values and all that stuff. So I'll try x equals, I don't know, uh, zero. If you plug zero in there, they get a negative, so it's below. Um, try x is five. So you have 25 minus 30 is negative five, plus 12 is a positive over a positive, so it'll go above. Let's try x is 0 for the, um, the denominator. This guy is always positive, so I just need to look at the numerator. When I plug in 0, it's going to be positive, so it's going to be increasing. And then let's try x is 3. Smush that in there. Plug 3 in there, I get 9 minus, uh, minus 24 plus 12. 9 plus 12 is 21. Minus 24 is negative. Okay, so... Um, it's a, a negative over a positive, so it'll, it'll be decreasing. Let's try x is 5. Uh, 25 minus 40 plus 12. 25 plus 12 is uh, 37. Minus 40 is negative, so this will be negative, and it's going down, of course. The previous one was negative as well. Um, let's try x is 7. Um, 49 minus 56 plus 12. Uh, 56, 49 plus 12 is, um, oh geez, 49 plus 12 is <laughs> 61, sorry. And then minus 56, that'll be plus, and then that's going up. Okay, so the last guy, um, uh, you know, try x is zero. The denominator will be a negative cube, which is negative, so that'll be a sad face. Try x is 5. So on the denominator, we'll have 5 minus 1, which is positive. Cube that, that's positive, so it's a happy face. Yay. And then we're ready to graph this guy. Okay. So it conforms to this asymptote towards infinity. It's increasing, and it's below the x-axis. It'll increase. It's got to go through this y-intercept. And then uh, as soon as it hits 2, it'll start decreasing. Okay? And then it's going to conform to this vertical asymptote. So there's the first part. Um, on the other side, then, it's above the x-axis, and it should be conforming to this asymptote, and it's decreasing right? until it gets to 6 at which point it will start increasing. And of course it's concave up, so it will have this U shape. And then it will conform to this other asymptote as X goes to infinity. Okay. So again, pretty awesome. You can graph all that without a calculator. Of course a calculator can do it in half the time. But <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's important because a calculator is too dumb to know what's important, right? And um, we have to guide the calculator. We have to say, oh, this is what I want to look at. Okay. Okay, and sometimes you don't know what you want to look at, so I don't know. Oh, let's try, uh, I guess, one more. So this guy is the logistic growth equation. Um, you'll see this in mathematical modeling when you're dealing with spread of diseases. For example, the pandemic we're currently in. I'm going to rewrite it just to make it easier to take derivatives and that sort of thing. So first off, the domain issue. Um, so this is like a rational function. The denominator just can't be zero. That's the only issue. Um, exponential functions are defined everywhere. So this can't equal zero. So you sort of solve it. And uh, that'll never happen, right? So exponentials, you, there's nothing you put into the exponent to make it negative. So um, there's no issues with the domain, and it's going to go from negative infinity to infinitaire. Um, symmetry. Uh, so the standard symmetry test is to look at f of negative t. Um, and if that equals f of t, it's even. 
Um, and then if f of negative t is negative f of t, it's odd. And then um, if it's it's neither if it, if it it's not equal to f of t or negative f of t, right? So anyways, uh, we can analyze the symmetry here then by looking at f of negative t, which in this case will be 10 all over 1 plus 4e to the negative negative t, which is positive t, which is certainly not equal to f of uh, t or um, negative f of t. So that part of it is kind of, there's no symmetry, bummer, right? Okay, uh, we need x-intercepts and all that good stuff. So uh, for the x-intercept, you let y equal 0. So we have 0 equals 10 all over 1 plus 4. So it doesn't have an x-intercept, right? You multiply both sides by the denominator, you get 0 equals 10, which is a false statement, so no solutions. So no help there. Um, for the y-intercept, you let x equal 0. Or in this case, I guess it's a t-intercept, right? Sorry. Um, so for the y-intercept, you let t equal 0. And you'll get y equals 10 all over 1 plus 4e to the 0, which is 10 all over 1 plus 4, which is 10 all over 5, which is 2. Um, Asymptotes. So here it's like it's like the case where the degree of the denominator exceeds the degree of the, the numerator. It's going to go to to uh, zero. Um, so there will be a horizontal asymptote as opposed to a slant. Um, there won't be a vertical asymptote, right? Because the denominator is never equal to zero. So no there. Um, and then the horizontal asymptote. You just look at the limit of uh, the expression as x goes to infinity or negative infinity, it'll be zero in both directions. Uh, 10. Oh, no, it won't be zero in both directions. I take that back. I apologize. 1 plus 4e to the negative t. Um, so as to x, as, sorry, as t goes to infinity, um, this part will go to zero, right? Um, because you'll be thinking like e to the negative 10, which is 1 over e to the 10, e to the negative 100, which is 1 over e to the 100. So that's getting really, really small. And at the end, you just have 10 over 1 plus 0, which is 10. Um, then for the other direction, as t goes to negative infinity, the denominator is going to go to infinity. Okay? So you'll have like L over infinity, and that form is 0. Okay. Okay, um, we need derivatives. So again, I'll remind myself g of t is equal to 10 times 1 plus 4e to the negative t to the negative 1. <clears throat> okay, so the derivatives of these guys are a little bit weird because you kind of get the same thing back out of the derivative. It's like when you take the derivative of an, of an exponential, you get the same thing back. Um, so you can kind of play some games with this. So let's, let's call this y equals 10 times 1 plus 4e to the negative t. And it'll make things a little easier to deal with because these derivatives are kind of nasty. So uh, y prime will be negative 10 times 1 plus 4e to the negative t to the negative 2 times 4e to the negative t times negative 1. So there was like two chain rules there. Okay. Um, this thing then can be rewritten as, uh, well, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm having a brain meltdown. 10 times 4e to the negative t all over 1 plus 4e to the negative t squared. But this thing can be rewritten as uh, 10 all over 1 plus 4e to the negative t to the first power times uh, 4e to the negative t all over 1 plus 4e to the negative t. Okay. Um, then this thing, and, and why, why am I doing this? It's because uh, this part right here should look kind of familiar. That's where we started, right? That's just uh, g of t, in this case, or y. Okay. So I could rewrite y prime as equaling y times something, and you could do long division on this thing, 4e to the negative t divided by 
um, 4e to the negative t plus 1. Okay, so that goes into it one time. So 4e to the negative t plus 1. I've got to subtract 1. So I'll get minus 1. So this will be y times 1 minus 1 all over 4e to the negative t um, plus 1. Okay. And then I could rewrite that thing um, as y times um, 1 minus, uh, and this is going to need, you're going to need a leap of faith here, 10 all over 10 times 1 all over 4e to the negative t plus 1, which will equal y times 1 minus, um, I guess, uh, 10, uh, 1 tenth times y. <laughs> Right, because that would be 10 all over 4e to the negative t plus 1. So you end up with um, y times 1 minus 1 tenths y. Okay, so that's, uh, if you want to multiply it out, it, it's uh, y minus y squared over 10. And then getting the, the next derivative is a little easier. Okay. Um, anyways, we need critical numbers, so I guess, you know, what, what are you going to do? Um, so you're basically finding where uh, these parts equal zero, so you find where y is equal to zero, which is kind of what we already did, right? We've, we've kind of already played that game way back above. Um, that never happens, okay? so that never happens. Um, never and then you have 1 minus 1 over 10y equaling 0. So that's where um, y equals 10. So y equals 10. Um, OK. So does that ever happen? Um, well, you can kind of see if it ever happens by just setting y equal to that. So 10 all over 1 plus 4e to the negative t. That will give you the particular t value for your critical number, if you wish. But uh, I don't think that's going to work, right? So 10 equals 10 plus 40e to the negative t. Um, 40e to the negative t then equals 0. e to the negative t equals 0. That never happens. So you, you can't put anything into the exponent that will equal 0. So there's no um, critical numbers here. Okay. Um, let's work with the second derivative then. And to get to the second derivative, I'm just going to use that, that equation for the first derivative. So y prime is y times 1 minus 1 tenths y. Um, which uh, in its distributed form, 1 minus 1 tenths y squared. Okay. So, um, second derivative is y prime minus, well, it'll be 1 fifth uh, y times y prime. Okay. So, uh, setting that thing equal to 0, then you have y prime, you can factor out a y prime times uh, 1 minus 1 fifth y. Okay. y prime is never equal to 0, so you kind of forget about that part and then just work with the 1 minus uh, 1 fifth y equal to 0. Okay. So here um, we want um, y to equal 5, and then we can plug y in to figure that out. So 10 all over 1 plus 4e to the negative t equaling 5. We need to find the t value for the pip. So you get 10 equals 5 plus 20e to the negative uh, whatever t. Um, that'll be 5 equals 20e to the negative t. That'll be e to the negative t equals 1 fourth ln both sides. So you get negative t equals ln of 1 fourth. Multiply both sides by negative. Then you get t equals negative ln 1 fourth. And then you could use a power rule to rewrite that as ln of 4 if you really want. OK. okay. Um, so it's pretty brutal. Uh, if you did it, you can do it the old-fashioned way um, without all the substitutions for y. 
So you could literally just, you know, the, the derivative uh, here, uh, g prime of t would be um, negative 10. Well, I guess I already did it, right? It's, it's sitting right here. Um, th this thing right here is the first derivative. You could work with that and find the critical numbers. You would set the numerator equal to zero. You wouldn't find anything there. Set the denominator equal to zero. No, no, no help there. So there's no critical numbers from this thing. Then literally take the derivative of that thing again. And that's where you kind of get in the trouble with a real nightmarish looking second derivative. So that, that's all I was doing is kind of trying to avoid that, but I, I may have confused you more. I hope I didn't. Um, anyways, let's look at the result of our investigation here. So we have, uh, we want, again, these three number lines. I, um, fx, f prime of x, double prime of x. Um, okay. f of x is equal to 10 all over 1 plus 4e to the negative t. f prime of x, if you did it literally, it would be 40e to the negative. So another problem about the method I used, it's kind of hard to check your um, signs with those. those. So I'll just write it, the answers that you should have gotten. 1 plus 4e to the negative t squared, down below. And then the third guy, um, the, the second derivative, uh, is not pretty. Um, it's going to be uh, negative 40e to the negative t times 1 plus 4e to the negative t minus 8e to the negative t all over um, 1 plus 4e to the negative t cubed. Okay, if you went through the the ugliness of it all. Okay, and then above it we have this thing. There are asymptotes at zero and at ten. So there's one of them. There's another one there. And what else? Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, so all these little points we have to plot. So there weren't any uh, x-intercepts, so all I have to do is kind of do a, a test value, like x is 0 in this equation. And of course, that's positive, so it's above the x-axis on the entire interval. Um, likewise, for the derivative, so you could try 0. The denominator is always positive. The numerator will always be positive, so it's increasing on all of its domain. And then finally, the second derivative, we had one uh, point that was ln4, which is about 1.38 something. Okay, so let me just label that ln4. And the corresponding point on the graph would be about right there. Okay. There, there was a y-intercept, so let me label that as well at 0, 2. And then uh, test values and stuff for concavity. Um, this takes a little bit more work plugging it in to this expression. Um, this, this part in the denominator is always positive, so you can kind of forget about that. Um, this part right here is always negative. Okay, so it'll come down to what this third part is times a negative. So if you plug in something like... Uh, x is 0, well, that should be pretty easy, right? So negative times a positive, that will be, that will be, um, oh, wait a second. So uh, this first part will be negative, and then this part, if you plug in 0, it'll be 1 plus 4 minus 8. So that would be negative. So it would be negative times negative is positive, so it would be happy face. And then try something like x is 5. And for that, I went to my calculator and plugged it in, and I got a sad face. Okay, okay so above, what does this thing look like? Well, it's going to conform to the asymptotes in the negative direction. It conforms to y equals 0. Okay? And then it's concave up above the x-axis and increasing. Um, 
until it hits LN4, and then it's going to go concave down, but it's still increasing. Okay, so it does like an S shape, and then it conforms to Y equals 10. Okay, so that's our logistic curve. And uh, this upper uh, asymptote is usually called the limiting capacity. Okay? So if you're dealing with a biological population, you may have issues like finite food resources, uh, limiting um, I forgot what that's called. It just blew out of my mind. My mind is, is having a meltdown again. Limiting uh, limit capacity limiting capacity. Okay, so if your um, yeah, if your population has finite uh, resources, eventually uh, it can't grow on and on forever, right? Because the, the little critters are gonna start um, starving to death, and there's no way for them to reproduce, or just geographically, right? Um, you're living on a small island, maybe like the Galapagos or something like that. Um, your population isn't going to get uh, in the in the cabillions, right? It's not going to the the little animals will start falling off the island into the sea. So there's a, a limiting capacity involved, and that's what you're seeing with that upper asymptote. Okay. So it's a little more realistic than like an exponential growth that just grows unchecked forever and ever. Um, this is uh, different. Okay, so uh, well, these problems are very long, I'm not going to lie to you, and, uh, but rewarding, because especially if you're more of a visual learner, you can really uh, get into doing all these awesome looking uh, pictures, right? And all somebody needs to do is hand you uh, a function. And there you go, man. That's pretty awesome. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you.